on this planet Earth. Hey, everybody! Welcome! Hi, it is I, Hannah Ruhama, the Kombucha Mama, and I'm here today with a very special guest, Jane Hogan. And I'm just now realizing that we've had a time change, and I'm hopeful that um, she had a time change too, so that way we're all here on the same page. Um, but Jane is a really dear friend of mine, and she's got a wonderful message. She's also been doing these uh, polar plunges, which I so admire her. Uh, <laughs> I do get my toes into the ocean, but I have to admit it is nothing like a polar plunge, even though it was very beautiful yesterday at the beach, very churny in the water. How do you reconnect with nature? Are you someone who likes to dip their toes in, in the water? Do you like to walk barefoot in the grass? Do you hug trees? Or maybe you just like to smell the flowers. Oh, thank you, heavens. Appreciate, appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm just going to drop a quick reminder to Jane, so that way we are all on the same page. But that said, if you have any questions, um, Jane is really an expert in rheumatoid arthritis. She helped heal her own. Uh, she talks about inflammation. She also has a really wonderful support program. So um, I'm really excited to welcome her onto the show today. One second. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we got a quick message out. I don't know who uh, imagines that humans are actually capable of multitasking. At least this human is not. If my brain is somewhere, that is where my brain is. But isn't that kind of cool? Because that really helps us with manifestation and uh, putting our attention onto the things that we wish to expand and increase. Like when we think about our kombucha and we send our love energy to that mother scoby and we tell her the things that are going on with us, our, um, you know, our woes, what's not quite balanced on the inside, then she's able to adapt and meet our needs. That's really what I love about working with plant medicine is they are so flexible and they are so willing to resonate with your vibration where you are, especially when we're talking about fermented foods and drinks because they are alive. They do have microorganisms. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, this whole notion that like we're in constant communication with the mother, with mother earth, with this planet. And what I mean by that is you know, whether it's coming through any of our senses, so smell, sight, hearing, touch, um, there is a constant communication. And that's really exciting um, because it means that we're able to receive a lot more information than we realize. And I was saying to myself, and I was like, so why is it that we feel like we can't communicate with plants or with animals? And I think it really comes down to we reflect Use to believe we can is part of it because ancient peoples have, you know, when there was no internet or TV or media to distract us or, um, you know, cultural indoctrination uh, through the many, many ways in which we are culturally indoctrinated on this planet, we had a chance to sit in nature. We would sit and observe and listen and feel into her and we would trust the information that was being shared with us and we knew we were in communication with her. Um, I remember being in Wadi Rum, which is a um, which is in Jordan. <laughs> um, and as we're there and we're looking at the beautiful dunes, which you know sort of shift and, and change shape, uh, they said the Bedouins knew the names of all the dunes. And so imagine being able to discern, you know, shapes and images that um, are familiar or think about the Eskimos and how they have so many different words for snow. Um, because when you live snow, it isn't just, you know, wet snow, dry snow, <laughs> big flake, small flake. There's so many ways in which you need to describe that snow because your very survival depends on it. And so I think if we allow ourselves to just know that we are in communication with nature, we are in communication with our bodies, we are in communication with other beings, human and otherwise, on a deeper level, on an, on an instinctual level, and on a bacterial level. Because I really, you know, bacteria communicate through something called quorum sensing. And this is where they're sending out chemical signals that you may not be able to discern or understand or translate or hear as words, and yet that communication is happening. And so one of when we say trust your gut, 
that's your gut, not mine, yours. Um, when we say trust your gut, what we're really talking about is tuning into all of this wisdom, all of this information, all this communication that's happening inside of our bodies. And so what do I mean when I say all this wisdom? I'm talking about DNA. I'm talking about the information that's contained within every single cell of your being. And so when we start to um, tune into DNA wisdom, hi, Jane, just request to join. I'll let you on here. Um, so when we tune into that DNA wisdom, that allows us to better understand, to hear, to feel into what's actually happening with us. And we have so much wisdom in our cells. We have generations, we have millions of years of information. And so as we're navigating life and we feel like we're coming up against situations that feel unfamiliar, going back in, really listening, or we're having a health challenge that we're really struggling with, Going back in, what it, what's your roots? Where does your DNA come from? That's a really great place to start. So I'm gonna bring Jane on here. Let me just read a little bit about her and we're gonna continue to explore this topic of healing with food. Um, so Jane is the wellness engineer and founder of Wellness by Design Blueprint. She's blending science and spirituality to create healing from the inside out. We love that. She spent 30 years designing foundations for buildings until the pain and inflammation of her rheumatoid arthritis led her to hang her hard hat up and follow her heart. Um, now she blends her backgrounds in science and spirituality to, to teach people how to tap into the power of their mind, body, and soul. Isn't this exciting? I'm so excited to bring Jane on. Jane Hogan, welcome to Mama's Mama Mondays. We're so excited to have you here. And I'm really excited to talk about your story and how you came to be. Hi, Hannah. Wellness Engineer. Hi, James. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here. I was a little, little late coming on, but I'm here. <laughs> I would, I'm a little late to everything today, it feels like. I'm an hour behind. <laughs> well, well, we'll be fine. We'll catch up. Absolutely, we always do. But speaking of catching up, it's really great to see you. Why don't you just share a little bit with our viewers who you are, where you're located, what you do, and then we'll dive on in. Well, uh, so I am in Newfoundland right now. Well, I live in Newfoundland and it's an island on the east coast of Canada. And um, yeah, our internet was like all wonky on the whole island for the last day. So it's been a little a little odd. But yeah, so I, as you said in, your, in my intro, I've um, been an engineer for 30 years and then I had rheumatoid arthritis. And that really, I see it now as a huge gift that really helped me see that I needed to examine my life, how I thought, everything about me and really turn my life around and make it a beautiful, a beautiful experience. So the pain was a gift. The pain was a gift, actually. Well, it's always a messenger. That's, a, you know, whether we feel like it's a gift in the moment or not, I think uh, most of us don't, uh, don't appreciate it. But that said, it's really there to tell us something incredibly important. And so rheumatoid arthritis, is this autoimmune? How, how does one get rheumatoid arthritis? Well, you don't catch it at a party. I can tell you that. <laughs> it actually, <laughs> it, like every autoimmune condition, it's, every autoimmune condition, we have a inflammation spectrum, right? So we're, we don't just suddenly develop it. Although for me at the time, I felt like it was sudden, I did have like a whole lot of stress uh, that kind of tipped the bucket over. So it, like, I went from being seemingly perfectly fine to like three weeks later, you know, kind of hardly able to walk and all this migrating joint pain. It was very quick. But looking back, over my life, I realized there have been a lot of signs along the way. I always had like neck tension, you know, rotator cuff problems and stuff like that. So, and, and also I had noticed that I was starting to, uh, I, I developed like a sensitivity to chemicals. So I was a swimmer my whole life. And then all of a sudden I couldn't tolerate chlorine anymore. I would get really bad headaches. And also I started noticing like weird things with food. Oh, when I ate ice cream, I got like a gurgly tummy. So, you know, looking back, I can see now that those were all signs 
but it's, to me, stress is a huge one. And, and stress can be external, but it can also be internal. And um, it's, it can be our perceptions about what's going on around us. It can also be our thoughts about ourselves. And so that's something I really realized, Hannah, over the years, that it was how I thought about myself kind of created a, I, I felt unsafe. I didn't really feel safe anywhere. I realized, even though I, I appeared very confident on the outside, you know, civil engineer, great career, all of those things, inside there was a little part of me that never really felt safe. And when we don't feel safe, we're constantly in that state of fight or flight. And when we're in that state of fight or flight, none of our systems work optimally, right? Digestion, endocrine, cardiovascular, um, uh, all, all those systems, nervous system, everything. Right. Well, everything basically shuts down so that you can flee, <laughs> except exactly. that there's nothing to flee, or maybe we're frozen, or maybe there, right, there's so much, and Bridget here is, uh, is affirming that she knows exactly how you feel, because I think this is something, especially coming out of these last couple of years, where the constant message is about fear, and look, we need to be mindful of our health, we need to take care of ourselves, but there's also been few solutions offered beyond, you know, stay home and be afraid and don't go near anybody. And that is the exact opposite of what human beings are designed to do. We're bacterial sapiens, we naturally need to connect and have connection and, mm -hmm. you know, create bonds. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can really resonate with not feeling safe after these last couple of years. So, exactly. so then what sort of, how did you start to unpack <laughs> all of this pain and, and, you know, now you, here you are 2020, but how did we, how did you get to that um, thought process? Yeah. So between 2016 and 2022, there was a lot that's happened and I, it was all, I kind of figured out stuff in pieces and I didn't really get the whole, I knew there was a stress component, but I really thought in the beginning that the whole solution was food and, mm. and that's a big part of it. You know, when, once you once you developed, well, anyone with autoimmune condition, once it's been diagnosed, you get leaky gut. And so once you've got leaky gut, you do get all these food sensitivities. So you've got to be super careful and stop fanning the flames of inflammation, right? So in the beginning, it was really all about food. And then I was like, okay, I got to, I can need to rest. And all right, I better get some of, rid of some of these relationships that are causing me stress. <laughs> Uh, or at least, you know, not really get rid of them, but just not let them come into my sphere too much, you know? And uh, it, I think it was years, maybe a couple of years into it before I started really getting into this whole thing about what, ha how did I feel about my past? Like what kind of beliefs did I develop even as a little girl, right? Um, I, and I wouldn't say I had any capital T trauma, but I probably, I did have lower, we all have trauma, right? We make decisions yeah. when we're little, like before the age of seven about what things mean. And so we file that and that becomes a filter for how we see everything. We, and we, we're not even aware of this. It's all happening in the background. So really doing a lot of work with that was, was key. Still is. And I think you're, well, right. And you're spot on is that, again, we are sponges. And so we absorb everything around us. And when we don't have a fully formed prefrontal cortex, it's hard to put context to things. And so we end up running these sort of, you know, macros or knee jerk up, you know, or ego, however you want to kind of define what happens when those pathways, when those, you know, synaptic pathways get formed in the brain. I mean, I've just been through a tremendous healing with some of my capital T or little T trauma as it is because I kept playing the same mm. movie and I was projecting onto my husband something that wasn't true about him. But because I couldn't get myself out of this trauma loop, it was really, you know, creating mm. trouble and, and strife for us. And I had to take some, you know, big changes. Actually, I went to this thing called Mind Fix and it just really helped me reframe perspective and understand how much those situations, even when we're a young child, can become the lens through which we're seeing everything. And, you know, 
so you're absolutely right. There is a dietary component and that's where our fermented foods and all kinds of things like this can really help to create that balance. But then there's more work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And that work can be so challenging. The reality is though, there's so many modalities. So what are some of the modalities um, mm -hmm. that you started to implement? Because just talk therapy sometimes will just keep that same story loop going. Yeah. And we need, you know, we have so many more modalities available to us. What are some of the ways that you were able to tap into your body and help release? Uh, some of this old trauma and stress. Oh my gosh, you are right, Hannah, that there's so many ways, there's so many different things. And, I, and I, I totally agree with you that the talk therapy doesn't necessarily clear it. It may even trigger it a little bit more. And we don't even really have to go back to the situations, except maybe to forgive, right? To forgive and release. And because resentment and blame are... are our emotions that keep you in the fight or flight, right? So we need to let those go, but sometimes it's easier said than done. So initially for me, it was doing uh, like journaling. So doing a lot of journaling and like reflecting back on what I remembered, things that I remember that had happened and how that's coming out of my personality today. So that was some, but I tell you, um, I learned a lot of different mind body techniques, like tapping was a great, release as well and that's still a great it's a tool of resilience really that anyone can use now so if, if you're not familiar anyone in the audience if you're not familiar with EFT tapping just look it up there's ton there's an app there's tons of YouTube videos and I remember even in the beginning just like doing this tapping it's like oh even now like I can just feel a release with it right um and then I uh a tool that's been really helpful has been what I've learned through the Energy Codes, I don't know if you've heard of this book by Dr. Sue Mortar called The Energy Codes, Seven, uh, seven Step Process to, um, I've forgotten all the subtitle now, but it's, uh, here we go, Seven Step System to awaken your, awaken your Spirit, Heal Your Body, and Live Your Best Life. And uh, so anyway, that one, there's a lot of tools, but they're really, a lot of them are somatic types of tools. So in other words, getting very aware of what am I feeling in my body right now? When something, so first of all, you have to like really come into your body. A lot of us are just stuck in our heads, right? So really get into what am I feeling right now? Like, am, am I like, am I feeling the pain in my neck? Am I feeling a tightness in my belly? Am I feeling like, like in my throat? Is my heart feeling like constricted? Like, what is it? What, what am I feeling in my body right now? And connecting that with what, what you're experiencing right now. And then using tools to just release that. So sending, breathing, like imagine that you're breathing into it, sending it loving energy, um, really like uh, focusing on it. As if it was, I always say like, as if it was a small child or a pet and saying, uh, you need my attention. I've got you. I'm not going to let you go this time. You've got my attention. And I'm here for you. That kind of feeling, right? That's the feeling that you need to have towards these parts that are feeling, uh, feeling a something strange, not not normal, like not free and easy. It's energy, right? Energy flowing. Or right. Not, it's or all about flow, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you know, I feel like when we don't process our trauma, it's like we have a big piece of food stuck in our throat, <laughs> yeah. except we're like pretending it's not there. And so we keep trying to eat more and it just, it, and so we need to, it's not like you said, we don't need to necessarily go back and relive things. Sometimes that can help. Other times it's just allowing ourselves to even acknowledge that it's there. Yeah. And that's what I love about what you said with the journaling and the, you know, those types of things, because it gives you that space for you to examine mm -hmm. for yourself, to yeah. see for yourself where things are, yeah. are blocking you. But I also feel like when we do that work, because it can be challenging, it can be emotionally draining, but when we do that work, what we create are nutrients is fertilizer for our blossoming. And so mm. there really is tremendous value to investing in yourself, to giving yourself the time and space to show up, to do this work you're talking about, to do the tapping, to hold yourself in these different ways. Yeah. And, so, and I think you did a, a lot with breath work too. Um, yes, <laughs> I do a lot with breath work. Um, yeah, I mean, the breath work, it's like combining breath work with this thought process of a 
of loving attention and energy. So, you know, your, your energy flows where attention goes, right? So if you place your attention on the place where you're feeling pain or constriction or a little lump in the throat or whatever it is you're feeling, then you're giving it some energy and allowing the energy to flow again. And you don't, we don't need to know like, why is it I got that? Well, who said what? That, that, that it doesn't matter, right? It's just like, oh, I am noticing that I got like, whenever this happens, I get a little bit of a, for me, a lot of times it's a tightness in my solar plexus. And so I know that now. So, okay, I'm going to breathe in it. So there's certain breathing patterns like to really like pop out that solar plexus and breathe in. Well, it's a very subtle move actually, because it's, it's a hard part to, to breathe into, but imagining that you're uh, like making it a little bit bigger and then making it a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger on the inhale and a bit smaller on the exhale. Sometimes it can help lying, lying down. So yeah, I use breath work along with this energy and attention on a particular spot and almost like imagining that spot, the breath moving through it, like pulling each way. Like if it was my neck, I might even imagine that I'm, I'm, inhaling from all directions through my neck and then exhaling out in all directions through my neck or even like back and forth or back and forth this way. So it's really kind of fun doing this, playing around with it. And it does take a little bit of a t time and attention. But the thing is, until we clear these, we can never be the full version of ourselves because something is holding us back all the time. And, and that's why the pain is there. It's there to say, hey, you've been ignoring this. It needs to come to the surface. And I'm not going away until yeah. you acknowledge me in some form or fashion. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the way that, um, you know, herbalism and homeopathy are North America and, you know, of course, native traditional um, herbalism and pathways, that's what this country was founded on. Now, that's not where we are right now. And so what happens is a lot of people think, oh, I have a symptom let me treat a symptom, except then that treatment, even if it does offer some temporary relief, does not parlay into a long-term no. solution. And so, so let's say you're someone who's been using these, you know, band-aids and they're not working for you anymore. What's, what's your best advice? Where do people start? For me, it always starts with the breath, right? So even if you are if, if you are in pain and you are taking medications for the pain, start with the breath. Just start with the breath because we want to feel calm. We cannot heal. So pain isn't the problem. Pain is a, is a sign that there is a problem, right? So, we, and we, if, as long as we are in that fight, flight, fear, that, that sympathetic state, we cannot heal. So the breath is the fastest way to get yourself into that parasympathetic state, the rest, digest, repair, rejuvenate state. And that's the only place where healing can happen. So st I would say start with the breath. If you are not e even, if you've never even thought about what is breath work before, just start by noticing your breathing, breathing in and out through your nose, uh, noticing are you breathing in the chest or are you breathing into the belly? Because chest breathing keeps us in fight flight, that sympathetic state. Belly breathing activates the parasympathetic, the rest, digest, repair state. So breathing into the belly. Now that's hard for people. And I remember this because I was a chest breather because I was constantly in <laughs> fight or flight. So I would, people say breathe into your belly and I'm like, I, I can't, what do you mean? I could, I just couldn't do it. So the way I teach people now to start doing it is to start with an exhale. So exhale and pull, imagine that you're pulling your belly button back to your spine. So exhale, belly button back to the spine. And now when you inhale through your nose, push your belly forward. And that helps draw the breath. I mean, it's our, it, the breath isn't going into the belly. It's going into the lower part of the lungs. But the diaphragm muscle pushes down. <laughs> there we go. The diaphragm mus muscle pushes down on the belly, which pushes the belly out. Perfect. 
So we can we can even exaggerate those movements, yeah. especially at the beginning, yeah. to start to really feel them. Yeah, and eventually we don't want to have this great big belly movement. But in the beginning, if you if you are not a belly breather, and you can just test by you know hand on the belly, hand on the chest, take a big breath, and what moves? Is it your chest? Does your chest go up, or is it belly? So you'll know whether you're a belly breather or a chest breather. So in the beginning, yes, you may need to like exaggerate it to really train your body like you're you're teaching it like like you'd learn any other exercise you have to practice it right and then you get muscle memory and then it becomes normal for you to breathe that way so breathing through the nose breathing into the belly then you might want to focus on slowing it down so just slowing the pace down notice how long you take for an inhale and how long you take for an exhale and see if you can lengthen it out five and five and maybe have a little pause in between. So that's a good way to kind of start lengthening it out a little bit. So you're not like, because <laughs> obviously fast breathing like that, that's associated with the sympathetic state, right? Running, needing like a lot of oxygen. So um, then the fourth thing you can do is start to lengthen out the exhale right so lengthen out the exhales because in reality and this this always sounds funny and it sounds paradoxical but um big inhales all the time mean we have too much oxygen in our blood which actually and not a, not a good balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide and that actually results in not enough oxygen getting to the cells in a weird thing. You need to have the right balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen in order for the oxygen. The carbon dioxide is needed to shuttle the oxygen into the cells. So if we have too much oxygen, it kind of doesn't even really help. We need the carbon dioxide to build up. So, uh, so lengthening out the exhales can help with that. So that's four things to work on. Start right in the, the earliest one, like start with breathing through the nose first. Now, some people have like uh, congestion, so they might feel like I can't breathe through my nose. I'm just too congested. I can't like, there's no way I can breathe through my nose. They become habitual mouth breathers. So if that's the case, uh, to clear your nose, you can like just take a normal breath in and a normal breath out, like no, don't, but just a normal breath in, normal breath out, plug the nose, and then move the head up and down or side to side or walk around so you've got some movement going on. And what that does is, and hold your breath until you get, get like a, like just a moderate air hunger, like not like, <gasps> not gasping, but just moderate air <laughs> hunger. And when you do that, you build up nitric oxide, uh, which is, it's actually what Viagra is made of. And so it's a dilator. So it dilates, it opens up the airways. So eventually it will help open up your nasal airways, right? So that you can get that breath into your nose. So that's something for your audience to try as well. And then at night, of course, we're not aware at night right? If we're breathing through our nose or breathing through our mouth, because we're asleep. But if you wake up with a dry mouth, or if you snore, that's probably a good sign that you're breathing through your mouth. Um, so you could get a little piece of tape. Well, I don't have any, oh, a little tiny bit here. I mean, just some 3M micropore tape. And you just pull off like a piece about the size of a stamp and put it across the lips at night. So, you know, if you had to, you would still be able to open the mouth but it's just like almost like a little subtle reminder to your brain that um, breathe through the nose while, while sleeping. So you could give that a try as well. So Hannah, that's some tools for your audience. There's a lot of tools. These are really great tools. And I think, right, people might be thinking, well, what's the big deal if I go through my mouth or my nose? But immediately I can think, well, you need oxygen in your brain. And while you're still getting oxygen to your lungs when, you, when you're when you breathing through your mouth, how much of that is then circling back up into mm -hmm. your brain? And so it makes sense to me why, you know, first of all, that's why your nose is on your face is specifically because we're supposed to intake that and it has that line directly into our brain right there as opposed to uh, going the opposite direction down into our digestive system. Well, and the other thing is, too, that the uh, when we breathe in through the nose, it's our first, like, filtration 
system, mm. right? So it filters the air, it, it uh, pressurizes, right? So it make, puts it at the right pressure. It, if we breathe through the mouth, we don't get that nitric oxide, right? So we need that nitric oxide to help uh, dilate the passageways, but also within the lungs as well. So it helps us absorb oxygen better. So you're actually much more efficient when you're breathing through your nose, even though it doesn't seem like it, you really are more efficient breathing through the nose than you are through the mouth. And also when we breathe, when you become a habitual mouth breather, that, that the whole structure, it sounds really funny, but the whole structure of your uh, palate changes and actually it makes the airways get smaller when you breathe through the mouth all the time. Yeah. And you now, better lose it. It's so, you gotta, so you gotta use these so they don't uh, use it or, or lose it. Yeah, yeah. And it starts, you know, it's funny, even the chewing, even chewing helps open the airways as well. That, that whole, um, that whole system of chewing and that creates a palate that makes an airway that's bigger. It like, it's so weird. Even like going back to breastfeeding, like babies that are breastfed have to work, their palate has to work a lot harder, right? To get the, the milk in uh, compared to bottle fed. And so a lot, lots of times bottle fed feeding can re lead to um, smaller air passages, which is another super interesting thing. Now, don't, if, you were, if you were a bottle fed, don't feel like, you know, that's it. I got to give up now. You can still do this practicing. You will increase the size of your airways. That's great. And then I know that for you, the breath work then leads to energy work and spirituality. How do you tie all of those together? Well, you know, the breath really is spirit in the body. It's kind of like the breath is, a, is our connection with spirit. When we stop breathing, we're not alive anymore, right? And it, so it represents the spirit in our body. And, and, you know, the whole people aren't used to thinking of ourselves as energy. <laughs> right? We think we're pretty solid, but we're actually, quantum physics tells us that the smallest particle of anything is actually energy. And we are made up of particles of energy. So we really are energy. We've just been compressed. We're vibrating at a slow enough rate that it feels very solid, but actually everything, rocks are actually energy. They're just like vibrating at an even slower rate. So this is a little bit of a mind bender for people to think of us as, as our physical body, as energy, but it is. And we actually are even have more energy outside of our physical body, which can actually be measured and pictures have been taking, taken of it. Um, so we do know we have this there. And so it kind of makes a lot of sense when we put all this together and it's proven with science that we... It, Energy and lack energy not flowing is how we have problems in our system, right? Our, our body is meant to function well. It's meant to heal. All of that stuff is supposed to happen. When it doesn't, it's because there's energy not flowing, no exceptions. So how do we get the energy flowing? Well, when we know that thoughts, right, can change energy flowing, foods can change energy flowing, blockages in our system can change the energy flowing. So all of these tools to help us get, so breath can help and a lot of, there's a tons of modalities, there's other modalities to help get energy flowing and to change our thoughts so that that helps the energy flow as well. Um, so yeah, to me it all ties together beautifully with quantum, quantum physics and that is really proving the ancient spiritual practices that have been around for thousands of years. They're just coming together now. <laughs> Proven by science. Well, and, and this is what I mean. Like we already, that I was saying before you came on, Jane, that like we have millions of years of ancient wisdom in our DNA. Like we carry with us history, with knowledge, with, you know, the ability to, to really, like you said, heal any aspect of our being but we live in a society that teaches us not to tune in, not to tap in, not to fully understand who we are and what we're doing in order that they may extract our energy for their own purposes, right? And this is, this is, but we live in an age 
where we can recognize this and we can start to shift our energy and how we use it and show up in a different way. And that's what I really love about um, evolution and this moment in time is that we can have these conversations, honestly, on a level and scale that we've not been able to yeah. because of control of the media or religion or, you know, whatever dogma was preventing people from allowing to fully experience what it means mm -hmm. to be a human being alive on this planet. Mm -hmm. And so I get super excited about this because it, it really becomes a choose your own adventure. And we have so many simple tools. Your breath is so simple. It's such an easy tool to tap into literally any time yeah. that you know, I think the more we start to remember that we have you know, this consciousness, this energy, this force about us that we can start to harness that in a way. I personally think that most people will do it for good, especially once they learn how to heal themselves. And I think that's where a lot of people are is they're in this state of inflammation. We live in a toxic world and, you know, we're all struggling with how do we maintain balance in a world that consistently pushes you out of balance. And mm -hmm. so I, yes, I agree quite a bit with, what you're saying here about how it's all connected and there's plenty of science validating that which there. ancient people just understood or learned or were trained in. And now we have the opportunity to learn and retrain for ourselves. So these have been some amazing tools that you shared with us today, Jane. Um, if people want to, what do you offer? How can people who are suffering, is it just rheumatoid arthritis? Like what else, who, who all do you serve and how do they get a hold of you in this great information? Oh, thank you, Hannah. Um, I love teaching people to heal themselves really and, and, and put all these tools together. But um, okay, so I, yeah, it's not just rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune because really like what, this, what I teach is how to help your body heal, whatever it is. I mean, I, I tend to focus on pain because, you know, if I go out there with sign, I can help anybody. It's kind of too big. But when people understand that my journey and what I went through, they understand, okay, and they have hope as well that some this can be reversed. Um, so I've got a really great little audio bundle if anyone wants to um, download it. Uh, they can go to my website, janehoganhealth.com, or that's probably the easiest thing. It's just right on that first page. So it's an audio bundle that's got um, a little guided meditation. It's got some affirmations for health and healing. Now, affirmations on their own are just like, you know, you can't just read them. They're magically going to work. You have to read them and feel it and, and feel what it feels like in your body if those affirmations are true, right? Because Feelings are vibrations in the body, right? And there's, uh, I've also got a, a guided breath work for a heart focused breathing, which is scientifically proven to, to create this energy. Our heart has an energy field, an electromagnetic energy field that can be measured like 10 feet away. And it's such a healing vibration. And it's kind of like the center between up here and down there and really helps create this healing vibration. So it's a, it's a little bundle with three audios they can download and put them on their device and listen to whenever they want. Well, that's great. And, um, and then do you have classes or what else are you, how else can people take advantage of your services? I've got, um, I've got class going on right now, but that started with where I teach the energy code. So I do this every once in a while. I'm a certified facilitator to teach it, but I've also got, um, right now there's a, uh, five day, um, breathing for healing course on my, they can get that from my website as well, get access to it. I've got a women's group, an online group where I teach. I really teach like how to get the mindset and also some of the food and things like that, the lifestyle, but um, on how to redu re reduce pain and inflammation and gain energy and just feel more peaceful and calm because those are what we really need for healing. It's called Wonderful Fine. So it's a month by month, jo join for one month or stay as long as you like. And I do group coaching in there. And uh, I do a yoga and breath work class once a week. Everything's recorded so people can watch it afterwards. It's really and really, really great supportive group of women too. Well, I think that's what people are so thirsty for is finding community and connection. And it sounds like you have a wonderful place for um, women to plug into that. 
And so just really want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here and sharing all that you do. I have to say, I've downloaded the bundle and I love your voice. It's so soothing. Oh, it's just, I, I really enjoy hearing you. And um, yeah, I mean, I love everything you're teaching because like we said, there's so many modalities. There's so many ways in which we need to come to this and food while kombucha is my medium, while fermentation is, is my pathway. It's not the only pathway. And in fact, it's, I always think of it as a gateway. It's just a doorway yes. in. And I'm sure like breath work is a doorway in because there's so many more modalities, so much more mm. interesting information to learn. And it just reminds us there's so many easy, small steps we can take to really take back our energy, take back our health. So thank you so much for being here today, Jane. Really appreciate you. And uh, I hope everybody has a lovely day. Thank you so much, Hannah, for the opportunity. I love, I love any time I can talk about this and give people some tools they can take around with them. They're free. Have them anytime they want. Thank you so much, Jane. Have a good day. Bye.